So you guys really seem to like my breakdown of how to make Ali Abdal videos. So I thought I would follow it up, focusing this time on his thumbnails, specifically how to make these two thumbnails. And we're gonna do it both in Photoshop and in Canva. And I've never used Canva before, so this should be interesting. But if we take a look at Ali's thumbnails, at the core of every single one is a good, high quality photograph. So we're gonna need to take some of them first. So let's take a look at the photos that Ali takes and see if we can figure out some commonalities to help us take photos more like him. And the first thing I think we need to pay attention to is the lighting. If we look at Ali, he's very well lit with a nice soft light. Now I know that he uses an expensive aperture light with a huge soft box, which casts this nice soft light onto his face. It looks really natural, really bright. There's no harsh shadows or really bright highlights like I have coming onto my face right now. It's just really nice and soft. Now, if we take a look at the background, however, it's actually not super bright. It's kind of dark, which then allows him to use a dual tone lighting setup on this really nice, cool blue color. And then a little bonus of a warm lamp in the background as well. Now there's one key that Ali uses to make these photos look cool. And that is he has a blurry background, which separates the subject, the foreground, from the background, which really makes it pop a little bit more in the thumbnail. Now you can do this with smartphones artificially. They can take photos and blur out the background. It doesn't really look natural though, but you can get the job done with that. Or if you're using your proper camera, you can just lower your aperture settings. What this does is it opens up the lens of your camera, allowing more light in and also separates your foreground from your background. So you get that nice blurry effect. But there's still one more sneaky thing that I've noticed Ali do in his thumbnails. Just take a look at this one and see if you can notice it. Specifically, Look at the background. Ali isn't sitting parallel to the wall, which most people do. I'm sitting parallel right now, so the wall is just running flat behind me. He actually angles his camera, so the background, the wall, is running at an angle. What this does is it creates leading lines, which draws your eyes into the thumbnail. It's actually a really clever technique. So taking all of this into consideration, I set up a background with a bookshelf, some blue lighting using my Aperture P60C, a little dash of that warm light using my Aperture MC, and then some plants, because it can't be an Ali Abdal thumbnail without plants. Of course, I also angled my camera, so now my wall is not parallel, it's running at an angle. And then I lowered my aperture settings of my camera to 1.7, so it gives a really nice blurry background. I also set up an Aperture 120D Mark II with a nice big soft box to give that soft light. And then I just took a bunch of different photos with different poses to try and match Ali's two photos. And now I have them, let's jump into Photoshop. So to start off, I wanted to match the colors of my photo and Ali's photo a little bit closer. And to do this, I used both a curves and a hue saturation adjustment layer, which you can do by clicking this little drop down menu here. I played around with these settings to make the image just a little bit brighter and to make my skin tones just a little bit warmer. Next up, I needed to add more orange. And so on a new layer, I used the brush tool on a really low hardness setting, selected an orange color and just painted in this orange into the background. I set the blend mode to overlay just to really subtly add a little bit more of that orange kick into the background. So I have those contrasting colors like Ali. Next up, I wanted to change the reflection in my eyes because the soft box that I was using was a little bit too big and bright and a bit too dominant in my eyes for my liking. And so again, using the brush tool, I just alt clicked or I think on Mac it's option. I'll check that. Anyway, while holding down alt, I clicked on a color in my eyes to match that color exactly and then just painted out that white dot. But then I had a new problem because now I looked slightly demonic. And so I needed to artificially paint in a new reflection that was a little bit smaller. Next up on the list was to create a template that I could add on all those icons on for the whole entire thumbnail. And so I selected the shape tool, made sure the fill was a white color, took off the stroke, and then while holding down shift, dragged out a white circle. Then on a new layer, I did the exact same thing, except for this time I made the circle this red color and then put a black stroke onto it and made it a little bit smaller. This was gonna house the X's and eventually the ticks as well. Speaking of which, I'll now show you how to quickly make a cross. So basically just use the rectangle tool, drag out a white rectangle, press Control J to duplicate it, Control T to transform it, and then while you have the rotation tool selected for that, hold down Shift until you rotate it 90 degrees. So now you have a plus, select both of those two layers by holding down Shift, and then press Control E. This is gonna merge those two layers together, then we can press Control T, and again, holding down Shift, rotate it, 45 degrees. I then put the two circles and the cross into a group, which I could then duplicate and use as a template. I made one copy, dragged it off to the side, 
changed the color of that red circle to green, and then created a tick using the same technique that I used to create the cross. Then it was time to clone these. Four white circles with crosses and three white circles with ticks. I dragged them around, played around with the layout to get it matching Ali's thumbnail. And then literally all I have to do is add in the icons. And to do this, you just need to go to flaticon.com. This is the place where Ali sources all of his icons for all these thumbnails and his videos. It's a really cool website. And basically you can pay to have these icons, put them in your videos, your thumbnails, and you don't have to attribute anyone. You don't have to put any links in your description, which is a useful option. But if you're on a budget like I am at the moment, then you can just use these icons and put a little attribution in your description. And so I found all the same icons that Ali used, dragged it into my Photoshop file, played around with the sizing, put them on those white circles and hey presto, the thumbnail is pretty much done. Now it's time to add the final little touches. So selecting all of the layers in this project, I put them into a group, duplicated that group, so that way we can edit it if we don't like how things turn out and then press Control E. This made this group into one single image that we can play around with. I then converted this into a smart object. What this will allow us to do is then add the camera or filter, and then if we don't like how it works out, we can change it. And that was the very final step, adding a camera or filter. Played around with the clarity, the curves, the hue saturation, until I had something that looked a little bit more polished off. And I think it turned out great. This really simple style that Ali has is just so effective and clearly communicates what the video is about just by using these icons and having a little bit of a cool photo. I think maybe my background lighting was a little bit off. I think the blue was a little bit intense. And of course I would have liked more of an orange light using an actual lamp, but I didn't have that. So I made do with what I had. And one more thing, I could have been leaning forward a little bit more to match what Ali's doing, but Overall, I think it matches it pretty well. Now, the second thumbnail. The first steps were much the same, adjusting the coloring and fixing up the eye reflections. But then it was all about creating this little pop-up because this is really the hero of this thumbnail. So I found a PNG image of the Shopify logo, a PNG of this cash bag emoji, and then I used Arial as the primary font to create this pop-up. I started by using the shape tool and dragging out a rounded rectangle. I adjust the roundness of it using these little settings over here in this panel to get it to look exactly like Ali's. I then made sure this was an off-white color, not perfectly white, just a little bit less. Next up, I added a rounded square behind the Shopify logo, which makes it stand out a little bit more. And then some gray capitalized text for Shopify, added the one minute on the other side, and then for the 1.6 million, just a slightly darker gray using again, the Arial font. And then I added that little extra kick that Ali does, adding that cash bag emoji. But here's how he makes it look really cool. Duplicate the rounded rectangle that you used as your base two times, each time making it smaller as you go along. I dragged down these rectangles, so it created almost like a staircase. And for the final rectangle, I dropped down the opacity to 70%. And now to separate these rectangles, we just need to add some shadows. So putting in a new layer in between the, the first duplicate rectangle and the original one, we're gonna alt click on that. So it clips it specifically to that rectangle. Again on Mac, I think that's the option key. I'll double check again for you right now. But what this allows us to do is using the brush tool, we can now paint on this layer and it's only going to paint on to where this rectangle is. And so using a soft brush with a dark gray selected and a 20% opacity setting, I'm just gonna paint on this very subtle shadow. I'm gonna duplicate this layer, drag it on top of the final rectangle. Again, alt click it so it applies just to that rectangle. And we have a tiered shadowing system that looks really, really cool. I then applied a camera raw filter to this one as well. And we now have a very simple yet very cool thumbnail that looks pretty much like Ali's as well. Though I don't know how he gets his shoulder so far up. That felt really uncomfortable for me. Now, can we do the same on Canva? You know, I have to be honest, I was actually pleasantly surprised with Canva. I thought for sure there would be issues with limitations on the assets you could use. And I thought that all the things, the features that I would need to create a thumbnail like this would be locked behind a paywall. But I was actually able to create both thumbnails pretty easily. The first thumbnail was pretty simple. I found a white circle in the asset library dragged that out, made it the right size. Then I found a cross in a red circle, which saved me actually two steps that I had to do in Photoshop. I dragged that out, adjusted the size, and then to add that black border around it, I just simply added another white circle and changed it to black, adjusted the size, and boom, 
we have a stroke. The only thing I really had to learn how to do here was to figure out how to actually arrange the layers and get used to the controls in Canva because coming from Photoshop, they're a little bit different. It took a little bit of getting used to. But eventually I got there and I learned how to group all of these assets together so I could then move them around and duplicate it to use it as a template like we did in Photoshop. I then took one of these duplications and swapped out that red cross for a green tick but the color was a little bit off and I couldn't find a way to easily change this color. You know, honestly, I wish for these kinds of assets, Canva would have a feature where I could just select that green and change it to any color, whether that be purple or a different shade of green. But I actually had to play around with the color settings, the brightness and things like that to match the color of Ali's thumbnail. But eventually we got there and it started looking really good. And then the final step was just to add in all those icons. And just like that, we have a thumbnail that looks exactly like the one I made in Photoshop in Canva, which is a free program. Now, the second thumbnail was a little bit more involved. Basically, it was the same steps as Photoshop, dragging out a rounded rectangle, adding in the assets, the text, whatever, getting the colors. That was really easy to do in Canva. What was a little bit more difficult was creating that layered sort of effect with the multiple duplications of that rounded rectangle and having that shadow. Because in Photoshop, I could simply just paint the shadow in with a clipping mask so it applied just to that rectangle. But in Canva, when I used one of the shadow assets, it didn't really work because you could see the border of that shadow. So I had to find a solution for this. And the solution I found was to use this rounded shadow, adjust the size, and then put it on top of each of those drop down rectangles. I then also couldn't figure out how to adjust the roundness of these rectangles because initially they were a little bit too round. It didn't look like Ali's thumbnail, but I eventually found it after admittedly too long of a time and it's just in the border settings and you can play around with it. And just like that, we have another thumbnail that looks really, really accurate to Ali's thumbnails. And to be honest, I couldn't tell you which program he used. Canva or Photoshop, either one got the job done. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know which creator you want me to break down next, whether that be their thumbnails or their videos. Peace and remember, you're only one video away.